Yo. It's me, your friendly neighborhood village person. By the way, guys, here's something that I haven't told you before. The name of the village I live in. Direct translation would be something like broken or the broken village. But anyway, this video is part two of the fire road video. So probably by the time this video gets out, it's already either summertime or something like that. Like I explained in part one, my neighbor wants to remove a bunch of trees, the bigger ones. But before he can do anything here, I need to remove a bunch of stuff. So let's get to work. Hopefully nothing breaks. And I can also record the guy removing these trees. Anyway guys, you by the way, several months have passed since that last scene. Okay, so here's the situation. Them trees are still here. Them big ones. So the guy... The guy never came. After about a month and a half, I called him up and said, what's up bro? Well, he pretty much explained me that um, his equipment does not fit here. So his solution was to remove this entire forest area. That's by the way the third time he's suggesting that. And it's kind of getting annoying now. Obviously I said no. Personally, I like this little forest area here. It's not that big, it's just from there to the Bansa Mill Shed. So it's not really huge. But uh, imagine. If you just flatten this area, I think it would look kind of weird and ugly. Or is that just me? Personally, I think it would just kind of expose the building over there to the openness. I kind of like this forest, so I'm not willing to let it go because of some dude who put some solar panels there. Okay, so I told him no. Then he started... Uh, he pretty much told me that if one of these trees drops on his solar farm, then the insurance company is gonna force me to pay for the damages. You tell me, guys. Does that make sense? I mean, who told you to park your solar farm next to a bunch of 100-year-old trees? I don't see how that's my problem. Or am I missing something? Okay, so I was pretty polite with the guy. Uh, and I told him that um, let's revisit this topic next year. And if you can remove some of these bigger ones without taking the entire forest down, I'm good with it. Trust me. Uh, for example, this one definitely will go that way. There's no question there. It's gonna smash those panels up if for some whatever reason it decides to break. So, yeah, that's the situation right now. Bunch of crap. But anyway, let's pick up the work now. Gonna just plow through this pile and uh, take it from there. The start is pretty simple, but uh, quite big boys at the end. What? This is one hell of a boy. By the way, if you don't know, I'm still on my first plate. I'm getting really curious how long this will last. I think my record was 28 locks without replacing the blade. I think that was my record. It's 
Spider. Peter Rev.
not sure what happened there. Maybe me kicking the log while the blade was running in it wasn't that great of an idea. probably the case but I can't help myself I love kicking things especially if they beat me off Guys, I have a secret to tell you. I have a huge weakness against cans. You know, these huge wood blocks. Whenever I see them, I'm like, bro, that looks so cool. I'm definitely gonna use it someday on something. But in reality, you never need this thick stuff. Only rarely. So it would probably just kind of sit somewhere, take up a bunch of space and eventually warp into banana mode or just go full propeller so this is just 8x8 but the biggest one i had was i believe 12 by 12 so that was a huge block of wood and it was really painful to cut it up into usable lumber i just have to keep doing it there is no use for huge blocks like this even that's more useful than this thing That's a lot more useful. Can it really be? Are we finished? Bloody hell. Gone. Well, except for this piece. But, uh... Okay, I'm, I think I've kind of figured it out. What's going to happen here? So beyond that point, everything was fine. During this section of, uh, let's just call it Bob. During this section of Bob's life, midlife crisis, right here. On this spot, the guy met a woman, but it didn't really go very far because the woman was a drug addict. It did not bother the guy though, he moved on. No idea. Basically, I don't think it's worth cutting this piece up. Number one, I would get like zero usable lumber pieces from it. Number two, I would get some blanks, but uh, I don't know, they would be all over the place. So I'm gonna keep this lock. Maybe I'm gonna use it as a sign post one day. That's, that's a maybe though. This thing is like baby powder, so soft and fluffy, and not that much to be honest. From all that bile, it's just a little bit of sawdust. Now just imagine if I had a chainsaw mill, I would probably be dead by now. Either I would be drowning in sawdust, or do the amount of labor required to use a chainsaw mill. really like how my track cleaners are working keeping the track nice and clear. New problem, bro. 
this simple thing works so well and it doesn't just uh, remove sawdust from the track and also debris and stuff uh, let's, let's do a little test put some put some crap on the track stay bro don't be a douchebag we call it the um, track test and burns track testing Bro, I think it performed pretty well. Putting that Soviet chair there might backfire on me one day. You're fine. This though is not so fine. Yeah, I was super excited getting rid of that giant log pile, but uh, now I have another one and it's a bit more disturbing. So all of this will be firewood. Maybe I can get a couple of two meter long logs out of here that I could put back on the sawmill later. So I'm thinking um, I'm not gonna do any more freaking firewood for the next five years at least. A, sick of it. I'm sick of firewood. B, I have nowhere to put this stuff. Like, nowhere. This vial as well. Whatever, I'm gonna keep it here. Keep it here until next year. Just uh, check how natural this uh, off-cut off station is. It's just perfect. Just a couple of trees on this side and the shed on that side perfect place to store off cuts out of all this pile let's see what we got a bunch of six by six posts a bunch of planks perhaps just perhaps i will do something with them one day probably not but it's still good to have them <sighs> stuff bunch of stuff oh some uh, 4 by 4s these are useful. And this pile here, bunch of 2 by 4s 2 by 6s 2 by 8s And this entire section should be 1 inch boards. If I understand correctly what the inch is. Obviously though they're not gonna just uh, hang around here. So this is probably gonna sound a bit weird. But it should only take a mere moment. What guys? These mosquitoes. It's not even funny anymore. Creatures from hell. I wish I had a flamethrower. <laughs> They're literally everywhere. The worst part is sitting in the bobcat. You don't even hear the engine. All you hear is bzzz. Tried like 10 different mosquito repellents. If you ask me, I think that's their food because does not help but anyway holy moly this was probably the best part of this video don't ask me why but for some reason i love stacking raw lumber it's a weird kink of mine anyway see this openness 
that I got going on now. Can't say the same for that pile though. Best description, somebody who hates me. Took a giant doo-doo up there and grabbed on my doorstep. And I have to clean it up. But I guess let's just kind of get to it and pray that at some point the bile will end. Cocaine mode, at least the best mode. And why do you ruin this moment? Stupid chainsaw. <laughs> Spark plug. Check it out, guys. There's like billion mosquitoes in here. Freaking hell. Jumal usku, ma otan nii palju sääski see aastane. Sada tükki mõmber. It's a carburetor, it's well, something is in there somewhere. it all of a sudden it works what a mystery how does this thing open up
of fun. Cocaine mode, guys. Cocaine mode is always fun. Basically, guys, basically, it's gonna take uh, some time. I'm guessing about 10 seconds or so. What the hell? Has the nightmare ended? <sighs> Basically, I need to break. I do believe this is the biggest firewood bile I've ever made, but not by a lot. Still have the bigger ones all around the place. Uh, something like this. Now I'm even supposed to split that. This could probably do it if you go at it like 100 times. The main problem though is getting that beast on top of there. It's just not worth it. That log is not worth breaking your back for. So I'm just gonna throw these bigger ones in a corner somewhere. Maybe I will get something bigger one day or build something myself. 
I'm still quite confident that that thing can probably split most of these big ones. Sure, it split it, but now what? The thing will just kind of fall on me or something. Man, I hate this tree. The fibers. This just this just don't want to let go. Douchebag tree. Well, we got through that one, but that was something. Even if it looks small and worthless, it still has some pretty nice splitting power. You could probably use that thing to pick up the logs and put them on here. Yeah. No. Not falling for that again. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave them for now. Maybe if I buy something bigger. Then at least I have some good testing material. But anyway guys. We are nowhere finished with this video yet. Still have a bunch of things to do. But I'm not gonna rest until all this area is just clear. I don't want this crap here. I want, I want clear, I want clearness. Also that bit there, what the crap? Looks like I'm living in a jungle. Jungle of crap and I don't like it. So next bit would be to get some gauges going and start stacking this thing up. Inty wincy ding with that though. Don't have any more gauges left. Need to make some. Inty wincy with that also though. Don't have any materials to make some. Well, I have this stuff, so I could use that, but I need the base. The base needs to be strong. I could use pallets, but they have proven to be pretty, well, freaking mosquitoes. Stop stabbing in my eyes. Get lost. They have proven to be pretty worthless. I mean, they just break for no reason. If we consider smashing into it with the pocket, a uh, valid reason. So my plan is to, you know, I have these two meter long locks. I managed to save from that pile. And I figured I could make like four by fives or four by sixes. I have a bunch of them here as well. I could make those 4x5s and use those as my base for the firewood racks. I should probably buy those ICB or IBC containers. The thing is that I want to use up my waste materials before I move on to those. That is the end game for me, but right now, right now this will be the current game for me. If these last at least five years minimal then they're worth it personally i think they will last 10 years no problem or maybe 10 days six months 14 and a half seconds Honestly, I thought I had a lot less. This is probably the most hardest working video I've ever made. Period. Or the most amount of work. 
But anyway, let's see how many 4 by somethings I will get. If any of these logs are too small for that, I'm just gonna cut them up into live edge ports. And if nothing catastrophic happens, then... Uh, I'm thinking planks, this one, because, uh, why do I need a reason? Freaking done. This is a huge moment, guys. I'm officially... Officially out of locks. No more locks. <laughs> Ignore that bit there. It's just... Just pretend that doesn't exist. Hmm. I bet I can fit that here somehow. Definitely. That's fine. I think it's fine. Probably fine. Anyway. Guys, so let's be honest, that two meter log pile, it was pretty much junk. If you focused on it with your eyes a bit, it was clearly like 
firewood material. Probably not even that. More like push it in a pile and set it on fire type of material. But they still managed to get some really useful stuff out of those logs. Let's see what we got. Not much, but um, still something. Piece of crap. Fixed. You know, it's amazing that I have some energy left over. That I can even draw stuff. Must mean I'm not working hard enough. Will this firewood BS ever end? It's like a dead cycle. I guess not. I hope not. I love firewood. Firewood is my best friend. Until it kind of pisses me off. Then it's probably my second best friend. But uh... Need a bunch of pallets now. Need those things. I'm not really sure how much I need. Man, I think like... Then at least. What? Bro, the boat is gone. Let's make some pallets, guys. Let's make some firewood racks, guys. That door. I'm gonna destroy that door soon. You know what the best part about building these things are? Well, number one, I get something useful. This is definitely useful. And number two, probably the most important part, I get rid of this crap. I've had it for years. I mean, what am I supposed to do with this pile? There is nothing of value here. It's just set the thing on fire and in a couple of hours it's gone. So I'm really glad I get to use this stuff up. At least it will go to a better cause. And I still have an entire pallet here of the same crap. And another worthless pile here. I would be so happy if I used them all up by the end of this video. That would be so great. That would be amazing. Well, that's one down. They need like bazillion more. This is fun. Lots of fun. Lots of fun, guys. You know what, guys? Maybe I can uh, reuse some of those old pallets I did last year, but make them beefier. Then I'm gonna need to dismantle them. <laughs> I mean, I would just save so much time. First of all, I wouldn't need to dismantle this. That's at, that's at least a couple of months of labor. Plus they're like half finished already. I just need to add a bunch of more stuff here.
think it's worth it. I did save a bunch of time building it. And this thing is like jelly. Jelly sandwich. What the crap? And that's a lot better. That pallet though. is also a lot better. Okay guys, so freaking wind piss off. So before I go and make a bunch of more pallets, I wanna see how much I can fit in five. Well, I would say, not good, not bad. Maybe slightly over a quarter, definitely less than half. So I'm guessing um, um, five, then maybe 13 and uh, two and a half or three. I think this video will take forever to edit. <laughs> is why am I laughing? That's not funny. It's not funny at all. I'm like on week three now. What? This is this is hell. Please save me. What do you think, guys? One more laps run, and then just kind of wrap this video up. Why not?
I have. It's like maximum efficiency going on here. Right, tight. In there. Well, apart from that one, I think we're finished. Great, good, and Zelix. Zelix, you want to make this, and then we need to see. That's a lot, and I'm going to need to burn in this. Great, you cut the wood, and then we're going to pull them. I'm going to suva you, Bana. I'm going to, I'm going to running out of materials here. And this is all waste. This is, this is all I have left. But I'm pretty sure I need like three there. A scenario, maybe two and a half. Mm. I hate my life. Correction. I hate firewood. Mm. Might as well. I removed like four screws. Tight things just fell apart. Don't use screws outside. They suck. Bunch of spare parts. Hopefully I have enough. Zero. Although, although, if I recall, I, one of the ballots broke way back when. This is what desperation looks like. Desperate times, guys. Even if I wanted to, I can't make any more of them. This is literally the last piece. I hope it's enough, because if it's not, I'm just gonna cry. I'm probably gonna cry. Guys, not looking great. I don't think it's gonna fit. Kind of a sucky situation right now. I do have this one pallet. Could use this one as backup. I'm so close to the end, yet something is stopping me. Nightmare, this. Did it. Huge moment right now. 
I'm finished. Freaking, freaking finished. We are finito. So how many did I do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. Plus uh, some more. 12. Which I did uh, earlier this year. So we got a total of uh, 33. Each of them contains about one square meter. Uh, just check this out guys. Uh, notice that gap up there. So when I stacked these pallets, I think it was about uh, maybe like three months ago or something like that. I stacked those to the top. Currently there's like um, 20 something centimeters of gap there. And that's all from the drying. As the wood dries up, it shrinks. Okay, there's actually a couple of things still left to do. Hang in there. Uh, I promise you, it's not gonna take that long. So first of all, I need to cover these with something because right now they will very easily get wet. And the second thing is that I need to do some cleanup. Clean up the area. So about the covering, I had this idea, but I'm not going to do it completely. I mean, I'm just going to do about maybe 50%. Before I do the rest of it, I want to ask your opinion on it, if it's worth it or not. So my idea, first cover the top of the rack with that stuff. And then put the OSB banner on top of it. But not uh, just plain OSB. I mean, that would be kind of dumb, right? I also plan to treat the OSB with this thing. So this stuff is um, hydro isolation. It's meant for bathrooms to prevent water and moisture penetration. It uh, resembles a paint and it's usually put under the dial. Now, on a normal day, this would not be worth it because one box of this costs about $90. And I could probably do like four ballots with it, so not worth it. But you know how it is. My personal Santa Claus brought me like five of these. The downside is that all of them have some type of damage to the container and all of them are expired. So most likely I will not be doing any bathrooms with it. My only concern is that the hydro isolation, that thing um, should do its job by keeping this OSB nice and dry. Once it cures, it's like rubber. But uh, how does it fare outside, especially in Nordic climate, where the temps can reach as far as minus 30? And what do you think will happen to rubber in those temperatures? I'm thinking um, it's gonna crack up and then it's pretty much worthless. Right now, I'm gonna leave it as is. The, it's just a tarp. This, by the way, is a roof undercoating. It consists of three layers of plastic and the center layer is a fiber to add uh, strength. It is said that the stuff will last just fine outside for about six months. Well, it will last pretty much forever as long as it's protected from the sun. The douchebag up there somewhere will eventually destroy this. Personally though, I think it will last for about a year, maybe due. Then again, it's super easy and cheap to swap out. This entire roll, $30. And I could do about 20 ballots with uh, one roll. So that's like uh, $1 per rack. That is quite cheap. So I'm gonna go with this right now. I think it's fine for a while. And I will wait your comments on if I should go the OSB method. But personally, I think it's not worth it. I added a bit more tarp over the sides. And the air will be moving mostly through this area anyway, so 
Yeah, and that, that's just to protect it from snow. The wind will push the snow through the sides and once it melts the entire firewood rack is wet. So that kind of happened this year and it was annoying. So I need to add a bunch of those tarps, like a lot. Then I need to stack them somewhere. Um, that That is not good. I'm thinking I want to stack them here as humanly efficient as possible. And this thing is really empty. I don't know about you guys, but I love the smell of diesel. Some people hate it, but I, I like it. I don't know why. Maybe I'm related to Diesel Creek. 30 liters by now. I guess I use it a lot. Somebody has installed an aftermarket uh, gauge on the machine, but the thing does not work. Basically sometimes it's full, sometimes it's half, then it's zero, then it's full again. It's kind of jumping all over the place. Maybe the sensor. Safety level, 5 million.
when I built this way back when, one guy um, said in the comments that I did not add any diagonals. I guess it's wobbling because of that. What a difference. A bunch of crap. Eleven thousand nails. Eleven thousand nails.
I blame that thing. He, he, his fault. Remember way back, way back when, when we started this video off, I had a huge pile of dew somewhere there, somewhere here, there, here, here, and here. Now it's all gone. Man, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it guys. This is this is the this is the most amount of work I've ever done for a single video. But uh, believe it or not, not by much. Actually this video is kinda closely behind this one. And I'm so I'm just so glad that I got all this cleared up. There was moments where I just almost cried. The, the work just seems endless, but um, it's finished now. Took me about mm, four, eight, ten, eleven, fifteen, twelve to fifteen work days. And it's safe to say I can just um, that I will be skipping firewood probably forever. And this should last me quite a bit. And also, let's not mention that firewood shed there is as well just completely packed, so I should be good. These um, hillbillies, I'm gonna keep here. I need something, um, something manly for these boys. So let's kind of talk numbers for a bit. Was um, building these things even worth it? I'm gonna um, leaning towards the yes side. So all in all, I used roughly 11,000 nails for this whole bio. About 370 bucks. Also add the tarp thing, about $60. All the remaining materials I either had on hand or made on the sawmill. So yeah, about 400 something dollars. Now, if I went and bought 33 of those, um, these things I mean, the cheapest option for me would have been about a grand. All in though, I think I saved about $600 making them myself. But these things will not last forever, that's obvious. I'm hoping to get at least like five years. Pretty sure the DARP will not last that long. 
maybe a year, maybe two. But changing that out is not that big of a deal. But anyway, to the all. What's your opinion on that situation? And as always, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Now, if you're gonna mention, you could have used that stuff as firewood as well. I'm gonna stop you right here. Do not even go there. I would literally lose my pants. Trust me. You don't want to have ants without his pants. That will not end well. So I want to do a little shout out, guys, to Milwaukee. They're not sponsoring me or anything like that. I just want to give credit where credit is due. So this uh, blade. This one. Usually I bought the cheap stuff. The moment you hit a nail or a screw, it's uh, just, well, screwed. But for some reason with this blade, I've been sawing up a bunch of these things. And they are, they're just filled with nails. I probably went through like 100 plus nails and also a bunch of screws. At times it feels like uh, it's getting kind of dull, but um, after a while it feels sharp again. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, I mean, this thing has proven to be very reliable. Give credit where credit is due. Boner. Bunch of boner.